morning. Good afternoon to you, my brothers and my sisters. Good to see all of you in the sanctuary, your smiling uh, faces. Um, thank God for this day. Thank God for those of you uh, that are with us online by way of uh, Facebook and YouTube. We thank you uh, for your presence and we praise God. We don't take this time lightly for you sharing with us and we thank you for your prayers, your financial support, and all the things in which you do to help uh, this ministry move forward in our mission of saving souls and changing lives. So we thank you, and don't take this lightly. Delbert, am I that dark, or is it is it just darker back there? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I don't want to know police coming after me when I leave here. All right. All right, Dr. Matthews. Uh, lead us in a word of prayer, if you will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this great and mighty day. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together and to continue learning about I am a Christian. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that all hearts and minds are focused on continuing to learn and, and to receive this word on a greater hope that we can continue to not only receive it, but to share it with others, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray and thank thee. Amen. Amen. See, she looked like herself on there. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got me. Look, it didn't look like that Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get started, on this Friday, I have an announcement for you. Uh, Battle Creek Club, it presents its uh, Women's History Month. Um, women who advocate for uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion. That is March the 22nd, this Friday from 530 uh, to 7 p.m. It's at the Cool Family Center right down here on 200 West Michigan Avenue. And we've got two of our own uh, that will be speaking, uh, Dr. Sheila Matthews and Reverend Beatrice Orns. They will be speaking along with Shanae Settles, Kimberly Holly, and Sharia Heath. Um, Women's History Month. Light refreshments will be served, uh, and the event obviously is open to the public. That's this Friday, 530 to 7, right down the street at... Uh, uh, cool Family Center. Okay? So let's pray for them. I got a haircut at 530. Um, and, and you know, if you go to the, the, the barbershop, probably similar to the, um, the beauty shop, when you on schedule, if you get off, you, I mean, <laughs> because everything is, and everything with us, obviously, I'm sure with you, is appointments. Ain't no walk-ins no more. So you get behind one month, Andrew, it'd be, you know, 2086 before you get in there. Um, so I, I would definitely like to, to, to be there. Um, let's get into our lesson on today. I'm a Christian, Chapter 7. We are hunkering in toward the end of this great, I think, great uh, lesson that has been a blessing to each and every one of us, the growth and the development uh, that we have received from this curriculum. Uh, <clears throat> and remember on last week we talked about the three great joys love hope and faith we looked at love on last week talking about I'm a Christian today we're going to look at a greater hope okay a greater hope greater hope our anchor scripture is going to come from Psalm 42 and Dr. Matthews uh, read, don't read that just read the verse um, um, there you go. Uh, in its entirety, it's only 11 verses, but it's, it's, it's great reading. So we're going to read that psalm in its entirety, and then we're going to jump into our lesson. Remember, we're talking about a greater hope, okay? And this is going to be our anchor scripture, Psalm 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O so, God. So the heart, obviously, is the deer. As the deer pants after the water brooks, Tina, so does our hearts, or should they, pant after God like that deer heart pants for water. Okay? My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while thy continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Now, has anybody, you ain't got to raise your hand. Has anybody been there where your tears literally been your meat day and night? You ain't got to raise your hand. You ain't got to act like you all together. Your tears have been your meat day and night. 
why they continually saying where is your God okay now watch this when I remember these things I pour out my soul in me mm -hmm. for I had gone with multitude I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day mm -hmm. why art thou cast down O my soul and why art thou disquieted in me Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Mm -hmm. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from Hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Uh-huh. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. Mm -hmm. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Watch this. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? It's almost taunting him. You, where's your God? Now watch this. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Now watch what he says. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? So the psalmist starts out saying that I'm messed up. If you do, he, I'm depressed. That's what he's saying. I'm depressed. I'm cast down. He's talking to a soul. And then he said to himself he kept talking to himself he said hope thou in God we talk to ourselves only about the bad stuff but we leave the, the hope thou in God off we just start talk, having a misery party and no one wants to be invited to a misery party that's not miserable <laughs> right so you wonder why when you send the RSVP out you ain't getting no responses because like I ain't going to a party where the theme is misery I, mean, I'm, I, I, don't, mm -mm. I ain't gonna do that so he goes throughout here the, my tears they've been my meat day and night this people talking about me people saying where's your God he's talking about the position he in but he keeps saying but my hope thou in God hope thou in God so we're gonna be talking about hope today okay uh, and we're gonna be, look at three ways that we use the word hope right we hear everybody now this is uh uh, Dr. Matthew March and we hear people saying they hope Donald Trump don't be president and we're in March but they're using that word hope now the other one I mean ain't but two the ch we got to pick somebody I mean you got Biden and you know I guess any Mickey Mouse would be it, whoever Trump running against is the better I mean <laughs> you know what I mean but it ain't like we like oh yeah Joe 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 can't hardly pay attention <laughs> that's why it's a hope thou in God that's why Isaiah said the government is on his shoulder I'm going to vote because we need to vote but you know you just you voting for like who lying the least because all of them I mean you're in politics because you you know you're in politics right so we're going to be talking about hope on the day Sister so Weatherspoon okay we're going to be looking at uh, three ways that the word hope is used all right one Hope is the desire for something good in the future. Portia, that's, that's the first hope. We're hoping, we're desiring for something good in the future. I remember when I was a child, I would hope that I could go with my father to preach because after every preaching engagement, daddy would stop by a store and he'd give my, me and my brother some, a dollar or two and and we bought all kind of candy chips and pop. You got to remember back then, can't you could get? I mean, a dollar you could get a ten blow pops. I mean, you could get some different things. Now you go in there, you can't get one thing for a dollar, right? So I would hope uh, that that we could go with him. Um, I didn't mind the preaching part, but I did. I mean, I was you know a kid. I, the candy was good too. So I knew that if we went with him, that we would go automatically and again I'm talking about a dollar or two uh, to the store and we would get candy so I hope that I would go and I remember 
Andrew then that they would literally give the preacher they would raise the offering and they would put it in a brown like a sandwich bag like you like a kid going to lunch mm -hmm. <laughs> like oh yeah that's... no I'm serious yeah. uh, they put it in the bag sister y'all know what I'm talking about they put it in a brown bag they raise up the thing change and dump it change everything you know if it was five dollars and, and 98 cent nobody in there would have the sense enough to put two cent and make it sit they just give them whatever they gave you like it, <laughs> I mean, it, it was just strange to me uh, <laughs> come out there with a bag <laughs> all this stuff but we would use that change and that money and we again a dollar or two we'd go in the store and we'd get some you know like I said with a dollar back then you literally could get and I'm talking like I'm talking about 70s you could get pop chips and candy yeah. for a dollar now you can't get one of them uh, so Henry I, w I, I was I was hoping he did that uh, hoping I could go so in other words my desire was to go with him so that I could experience this good thing, which was getting candy and chips. Okay. Now I always did like the word too. I wasn't just going. I ain't, I wasn't plugging my ears when I went, but it wasn't. It it wasn't. It didn't hurt to get some candy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That ain't why I went, Sheena. I'd have went anyway. But since they was going to give him, you know, thirteen dollars, he'd give us two. You know. They didn't give you a lot back then, says William. They didn't give you a lot today either. <laughs> Secondly, Henry, hope is the good thing in the future that we are desiring when we use the word hope, okay? Nicole and I can say our hope is that Joshua does well and excels at Kalamazoo College, okay? We can, that's our hope, right? And they had to be out by 12 10 today they got to leave during spring break uh and the summer and all now spring break they don't have to move everything but in the summer obviously they got to take everything out because they don't want nobody living there that you know that shouldn't be so he'll be home when i get there he had to be out at 12 uh something today so our hope is that joshua does well <coughs> and excels in school in other words joshua's doing well and excelling at school is the object of our hope we hope he does well. Okay? <clears throat> Number three, hope is the reason why our hope might indeed come to pass. Nicole and I could say, the only hope we have in Jada following Josh at Kalamazoo College is that nothing goes awry with the Kalamazoo promise. Okay? The Kalamazoo promise is our only hope of Jada going to Kalamazoo College. We don't say our hope is for Jada, that's our only hope to go to any college, but to Kalamazoo College. Kalamazoo College is $71,000 a year. A, a year. <laughs> yeah, so the, the promise helps, like big time, obviously because the promise pays for, you know, the tuition there. But if you didn't have the tuition, I mean, if you didn't have the promise, it would be 70, I think 71 $75,000 a year, close to $80,000 w without the promise. So we hope that the promise continue. You, you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> if not, I'll be calling Andrew and Jeanette for a loan. They got that Williams money. That's long money. That's longer than I-94. I ain't picking on you today, Bonner. <laughs> so y'all praying for the promise too. <laughs> So hope is used in these three senses, right? A desire for something good in the future. The thing in the future that we desire and the basis or reason for thinking that our desire may indeed be fulfilled, okay? Now here's the thing, Deacon Henry. The distinctive biblical meaning of hope all three of those that we just talked about, they're actually found in the Bible. All three of them that, that we talked about. <coughs> Excuse me. But the most important feature of biblical hope is not present in any of these ordinary uses of the word hope. In fact, the distinctive meaning of hope in Scripture is almost the opposite of our ordinary usage. Dr. Matthews, uh, Isaiah 55, uh, 8 and 9. 
Since Williams, will you let Darius give me a drink? Of, uh, I, now, I haven't been up there eight hours. I ain't coughed. Now, he's uh, it's, it's trying to come on me. Go ahead. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay. Now, in the ordinary, when we use the word hope, we are expressing uncertainty. The ordinary, the three that I use. We expected uncertainty. I said, I, I hope I could go with my, that was uncertain, right? Thank you, D. Thanks, says William. <laughs> I don't think I start coughing to it. I said the Williams might have to give me that money. <laughs> that start starting me to cough. <laughs> I need something stronger. I need like some Andrew. I need that stuff you used to drink. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. You say weed. You used to smoke, drink weed. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. Listen. <clears throat> I hope I can go with daddy means that I don't have certainty that I will be able to go. Petrus, I hope I can go. We hope Joshua does well and excel means that we are not certain that he will. We hope the Kalamazoo promise don't go awry means that we can't be certain that it won't. Biblical hope though, Odessa, it's not just a desire for something good to happen in the future. Biblical hope is a confident expectation and desire for something good in the future. Confident, right? Confident and hope is two different things, right? We hope the Democratic Party hopes Joe Biden gets in. We ain't confident because we don't know what the going to happen. But we hope it, Right? Confident expectation is different than hope. I have a strong moral certainty. Now, I'm talking about confident expectation now. I have a strong moral certainty that Nicole and I are going to stay married to each other for as long as we live. This hope is not based upon wishful thinking and the laws of averaging. My hope is based, our hope is based on the character of our wills and the promise of God which are just expressions of the character of his will we have Nicole and I Darius have 26 years of evidence about the nature and commitment of our wills and the graciousness of God's will so Dr. Matthews we got you got longer we got 26 years of evidence we're trying to catch Petra and James and and Tommy and Odessa, we got 26. So I, not once have I said, I hope I don't get divorced. They ain't even in the, the cards. I mean, it, it ain't. I mean, <laughs> I, I never hoped that we didn't get, uh, it, till death do us part. Nicole said, the only way we're leaving is a body bag. And if I see anything in our house other than a garbage bag, I'm coming to move with one of y'all. Because she said body bag. And if I see one and anybody dead, I ain't about to be in one, Henry. <laughs> I'm coming to stay with somebody. <laughs> right? I can stay here in the church, but ain't no food in here. And I can't shower and stuff. So I had to come. The stand backs to take me in. I ain't going to make too much noise. I'll just be over in the corner. <laughs> so, I, Dr. Matthew, not one time ever did I say, I wish, I hope we don't get divorced. That don't even, I mean, that, that I ain't, that ain't. You know, now some people, a lot of people have not. Let me hasten to say this: a lot of people went in and didn't hope for it, but things happen. Nobody should. You ain't no punching bag. You ain't no. Don't let nobody. Admit, no, to get it. Mm -mm. You got two things to do. You and the, and I ain't talking about just physical abuse. 
you know, words and mistreatment and all that stuff. Don't let them, mm -mm, two things going to happen. Either two, <laughs> I'm going to leave you or I'm going to kill you. I'm not, you're not just going to keep hitting me. And I was talking to a lady the other day, Dr. Matthews, and it's, it's just amazing. Uh, and it goes back, it all goes back to esteem. And they were telling me that the, the going thing now, Portia, is they said these young guys, they laying here, they beating these girls to death. And the girls ain't, and the girls are equating that with love. And I'm like, what the what? I'm serious. I mean, just whooping them to death. And I'm talking teenagers and, and up. And I'm like, uh, huh? And there are, you know, the, and the girls are saying, well, he looked, he, he looked. So you think hitting you? Is loving you? I mean, it just floored me <laughs> that it's so pervasive. They say it's just like it's it's common. That was the word that the lady used. I'm like, what? But it, and then when the mother and usually now usually it's a single. Thank you, Sheena. Usually it's a single. Because the father would go, they, if they knew his father was in there, he'd be, his head would be blowed off. You know what I mean? They figure ain't no, you know, and usually it is just the woman and, and no man there. But I'm like, what in the God's name is this? Uh, so, and some of them, thank you, think that they're, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Matthew, some of them think they, they think that they're fat, they're overweight, they're ugly, they ain't got nothing. So anybody that comes with affection is love. Like, no, that ain't. <laughs> that ain't love and then the guy that's beating on you is the one calling you ugly and fat and overweight and no good and, and you turn out around somehow that he loves you <laughs> I'm like this is the weirdest thing I've ever hey, Mary I don't get it but on the other hand I do get it because when you don't have esteem when you don't value you then you, anybody, you, you know. And many of these cases, Dr. Matthews, the woman has the house, the woman has the car, the guy ain't got a house or a car. Or nothing. But he's beating you and staying in your house, driving your car, while going, Sheena, with somebody else. <laughs> I'm like, why would we subject ourselves to this? They don't... A lot of people talk about how boys and young boys need their dad. That's true. But them, believe me, if them girls, they need them just, if not more, more. Because the girl needs to see what a man is. Number one, she needs to be hugged and, 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 and loved by her father. And, and she needs to know what a different hug is from him, from all that stuff. So I, I, my head was just spinning. I'm like, I what and I went home and told him I'm like what I can't see nobody hitting on Jada and living I mean you know, and you know what I'm saying somebody beating on Jamila one of your daughter you be like hey brother hey it's gonna be some talking and some other stuff well you know what I mean but these, these some of these don't have no it's just the weirdest thing in the world but we got to change that. Uh, and we, our girls have to have this value. We got to do something because that, that's just crazy for them to think that they're so useless and no good and don't value that somebody can just beat them and talk to them like anything. Call them out their name. Come here, B, and then you come. Like, what? No, that's not. We got to stop. We, we got we to stop that. Okay? So when we speak of our, our future, we do not speak in the ordinary terms of hope. We don't say, for example, we, I'm talking about Nicole and I, that we don't get divorced. We don't say that. We speak in terms of confidence and certainty, again, because the character of, of a, a God-centered will is like iron. So we don't say, well, you know, we, we hope to not get divorced. We just don't, no, we don't do that. But again, people who have gotten divorced it doesn't mean they went in saying it as well like I said sometimes stuff starts going awry and sometimes your butt better get out of there and don't be letting church people talk about oh the Bible says you need to stay what well, the Bible says you need to get away from me that's what that's you know second Timothy Troxler 
you know, 357. That's what that's saying. But things happen, you know, unfortunate things happen, and, and God don't want nobody to be beat and killed and all that stuff and stand there to please somebody. No, that's, that's a bunch of malarkey. Okay? So we got scriptural evidence. Okay? After warning his readers that it is possible for people who have remarkable religious experiences to commit apostasy, which means turning away, and then go, be, go beyond the point of no return, he says this in Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, read that for us, Dr. Matthews, verses 9 through 12. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Mm. Look at the writer's confidence in his readers. The emphasis is on perseverance at the end of verse 10. Right? He said they still do. Their religious experience, watch this, was not a temporary decision made at a summer camp or a tent revival. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was continuing. It was continuing. Gets back to the ideal, the whole idea of marriage. Sister Petrie, the whole idea of marriage, obviously, is to be married to death to your part. That's the idea. Some people don't continue, not because of abuse and that other stuff. You just, oh, I made, oh, I changed my mind. What? You, what? Again, we ain't talking about abuse. We ain't talking about people just, well, I made, well, I found somebody else, or I fell out of love. I said, how you, how you fall out of love? Did you fall in it? I mean, I don't. I don't I don't, I don't understand. I, I mean, I, don't, I just, I don't, I don't understand how you fall out of love. Like, that must have meant that, well, even though we said these vows, that we didn't mean what we said or either we didn't understand what we said. You don't fall out of love. You can fall out of what you, again, because if somebody says they love you, he, and he's hitting on you, the point I'm making is that proves he don't love you. So he can say what he want with his lips. I mean, that don't mean nothing, Mary. You know, he's stepping out every day, coming home with different everything on and cologne perfume you don't have, blonde, pink, all kind of hair that you don't have. And then he keeps saying, well, I love you. Well, well, do you? I mean, I mean, you, you understand what I'm saying? That's not love. So just because a person says that, that doesn't mean anything. Um. That, that, that doesn't mean anything at all. Again, I got, I, some people love their dogs, their pets more than the woman. You say, well, why do you say that? Well, because they got to they gotta have a license to own a dog. So the, he loves the dog so much, the dog got a license. But he loves you and you don't have one. You ain't got a marriage light. You ain't got a promise ring. You ain't got nothing. He ain't even promised you nothing. At least get him a promise ring. Like, okay, well, you, at least you broke your promise, but at least you made one. <laughs> You just going to go with me. Like we both 57 and 60 and we go together. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> I mean, you know, going together, that's for sixth graders or high schoolers. You know what I mean? At this point, you need to, and you ought not because I, you ought not, well, it just, you ought not date or go out with anybody that you ain't go. Now, not that everybody you see you go out with, you're going to marry, but you ought not. Why are you playing with something that you wouldn't marry? Again, not that you're going to marry everybody you date, you know, and you shouldn't be dating like all the time. I mean, different people. I, ain't, I mean, you know what I mean? Pick, pick somebody or do something. You plan, you might well get on the dating game with Chuck Willary. Because you need to be, I'm talking about the older you get, the more serious you need to be, you know. <laughs> you know. First question, do you have a job? Second question, what church you go to? <laughs> right? Yeah. Third question, have you ever murdered anybody? 
<laughs> Y'all laugh. I'm serious. That's a heart attack. Yeah, you need to find out some stuff up front. Because now it's easy. You can, like, Google people. You know, were you born a male? I mean, I'm there, but I'm, I mean, divide up. Because now it's different. And we celebrate different stuff. That's sinful. Dr. Matthew, we'll have a gender reveal party, but we won't have an engagement party. You should only have the gender reveal after you got engaged and didn't have the, the baby. Now you, we just having reveal parties and inviting everybody to come. I don't need to, I'm not going to, listen, no baby is illegitimate, none. I don't care who the daddy is, who the mom is. I don't care how no good they are. God can make that baby somebody. But I ain't finna highlight sin. I remember, Pastor, can we have a, the baby shower at the church? Y'all know what coming from the now. Y'all can, you know. <laughs> Man, no, that, y'all married? No. Well, what? So I'm going to sanction sin. And that's why, and we have one member quit. Sister Jeanette knows she is. Uh, the baby, the grandbaby, the grandbaby wanted, to, she wanted the grandbaby blessed. I had no problem at all. I bless the son. He ain't coming up here. Not the son. Well, he the father. Well, he can sit right where he want to sit. The baby ain't done nothing wrong. We can dedicate and give the baby back to God. But you ain't going to come stand up here and act like a husband when you ain't one. So no, he can't come. We didn't bless the baby, and they, she quit the church. I ain't had no problem with that. But I ain't finna get a pen and sanctions. God signed me up for sin, helping sinners. <laughs> and I'm not saying they sin is any worse than any other sin. I'm just saying you want me to highlight it. People that smoke weed don't come to me and say, Reverend, can we smoke weed together? You want me to have an inner service <laughs> in the house of God and have him standing up here. And ain't the, and did this wrong. What am I showing everybody else out there? Oh, you ain't got to get married. He didn't. Oh, no, no. And I ain't saying you got to get married. I ain't saying, but I'm saying that if I'm, I bless the baby, and if you ain't the father, if you, if y'all ain't a couple, the man ain't coming up here. The godparents can come. The neighbors can come. Y'all can come. He ain't coming. <laughs> he said, well, that's me. Well, I'll just be mean then. Because I ain't going down that alley. All right. Watch this. It was continuing, Dr. Matthews. Now, I got on all, all that stuff about the marriage thing. You know, you fall out of love, and I don't like it no more, and he gained weight, and she gained weight. Listen, everybody, all of us going to gain weight. If you're thinking you got married, both of y'all 130, y'all ain't going to be 130 in 10 years? And if you're, uh, uh, if you're uh, uh, for the guy, you ain't going to be 130 in, 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 in six months because you ain't used to home-cooked food. So you're going to expand. Your belt size is going to get bigger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she gained weight. Man, please. Come on. All of us are going to do that. But it's continuing. So now you love somebody that weigh 130. No, you got to continue. Perseverance and godliness is the proof of the genuineness of a person's salvation. Now let's look at the writer's admonition to his readers. The admonition in verses 11 and 12 is not to become slothful. But now the battle is described in terms of hope, not just in terms of love and service. What the writer is saying, he's saying, keep, Carmen, keep your hope hot. Keep your hope hot. Some of us didn't quit God because the hope got cold and he didn't answer me and he didn't do. Now I done went and did everything. And then when I ask him, and he don't come, then I quit. Let me put it where we can get it, Dr. Matthew. I come to church all day, every day, but the minute y'all don't pay my rent, I'm quitting. Man, they wouldn't, man, they wouldn't even, well, why didn't you pay it? You live there. We see I had, oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. And again, this 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 is personal. This is up to you. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But let's just go down, let's just go down the aisle, all right? How much did you spend on them fingernails? Now you asking the church to pay your rent. And you ain't got no money. 
And you come in here looking better than all of us. <laughs> the phone, the, the plan that you got that, that allows you to talk to the Jetsons and order food and all that stuff. On the, how much does that cost? Him? All them apps. Oh, okay. The Jordans you got on. I know how much they cost. I used to sell them in the 90s. They was over $100. So all this stuff you got on is nobody's fault but Mary. The church don't pay your light bill and now everybody in the church wrong. <laughs> D, explain that to me. I sometimes go pay my, I go in because it's close and I ain't got to get a stamp. I pay the, the cable bill and people are married in line and some people be in front of me and the, they be like, I want to pay on it. Uh, on the cable? Andrew, what? On it? This is a cable bill. And it's just charges and charges. Some of them kid, they didn't know, and, they, and I know who kids who've done that, that, you know, they order something. They, a kid can be three, can't talk, can't read, but he know how to get on demand. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And order all this stuff. I'm like, you paying on a phone bill? I mean, a uh, cable bill? You, the much money you paying, you better off just going to Hollywood and seeing the actors. Because <laughs> that's a lot of money. And if you don't know, the stuff on TV now ain't work. We shouldn't be paying nothing. It's the silliest, most nonsensical stuff on there. Wife swap, three days, prison outbreak. They get out of prison, they marry. Y'all seen all this crazy. I'm like, what in, what is people doing? They're marrying people they ain't seen, and they you seen that they have, I'm like, what? And then us, you know, the you know, BT, which is for y'all, they on there just doing anything. Basketball wives, they ain't even married to basketball players. And Dr. Matthew, they go back and forth calling each other bees. And somebody call you one out here, you want to fight. Well, y'all, y'all sit there and let everybody call you one. He thought that's what your name was. And these are this supposed to be our channel. <laughs> Ain't nothing on there educating, nothing. But anyway, I digress. The full assurance of hope. What does the full assurance of hope mean in verse 11? He talked about full assurance of hope. It means hope which is fully assured, hope which is confident. Hope which is fully assured, confident. When I requested the water, I didn't hope that Sister Williams would go get it. I was confident she was going to get me one. I didn't go, well, she may, she may not. Maybe she want me to choke. <laughs> I didn't say that. I knew that if I would ask her that she would, you know, and I didn't even have to say it. Sheila got the, uh, Sheena, Sheena got the past spirit. I knew this was coming because I saw her move. And I need something stronger than that. I need something like hot, you know, temperature hot, not proof hot. 140 what was that Bonner that what you used to 140 <laughs> you ain't falling into that one huh oh 100 proof he did fall into a pitch <laughs> <I didn't laughs> well you crazy as a road lizard I didn't drink but I used to read the bottle and go, 140 proof that's like fire alcohol I don't know what. that's why when they after they drunk it they went and I used to say, why are you going to take another sip if it hurt that bad? Then they'd eat them little Vienna sausages and crackers just to coat their stomach. They didn't want no food. They just wanted a coating. Y'all understand. Okay, y'all ain't been around drunk. Okay. Hope that has moral certainty in it. It is not finger crossing. You know, people, I don't know what this, I don't know who taught us that. What? This is what I spoke to you. What does this mean? Other than I got flexibility in my fingers. What does it mean? People be crossing their fingers. Their games be playing. They be picking the things. And they doing this. And they filling out their brackets for in double. And they crossing legs. And won't sit on this couch. And they only wear one sock on that. I mean, y'all, Stevie Wonder sang about y'all in the 70s. It's so called superstition. I can't watch it. If I watch it, they're going to lose. It has nothing to do with you watching it. If they're going to lose, Henry, they're going to lose. Now, y'all ain't going to be talking about Henry because the Bears, they got some good draft choices, some good receivers, Henry. But that quarterback, they still need somebody to block. <laughs> but y'all got, got some good receivers. 
to go with uh, uh, Caleb. It's not the lip biting gaze as you watch the player go to the free throw line down by one with two free throws and you hope there is that he or she makes them both. You'd be sweating. That's why a lot of people, you remember when they passed that ball to Giannis and he, got, he threw it like a hot potato? He didn't want that ball. He know I can't shoot. Where do you think they got the, the, the uh, 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 what was it? It was called uh, Hacker Shack. They know he couldn't free, shoot free throws. So they'd foul, and he can't. He still can't. Um, so when they threw the ball, he, he wouldn't even catch it. He just hit it like, I don't foul me because I know I ain't going to make it. <laughs> All that pressure on you, 80,000 people in the stands, and, and you down one, and you sitting there like, oh, my goodness. Everybody watching, and, and they holding up. You see in the college games, people wearing Speedos in the, in the you know, they're shaving the head. They're doing all kind of weird stuff. And what they don't understand, Dr. Matthew, you play sports, players don't see that. You, we, if you're playing, you're locked in. You don't see any, you don't see nothing in the stands. All you see is what's before you. So all them yelling, they was doing that Patrick Mahomes. You see how that worked, don't you? <laughs> he didn't pay no attention to it. He just went out there and won. So now let me show you the connection between faith and hope because there's a connection there. Dr. Matthew is going to read your scriptures for us. Psalm 62, 5 and 6. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. So my soul is waiting only upon God. Right? Not Madam Cleo, not a man, not a woman, Portia. No, my soul is waiting on God, for my expectation is from him. Right? From God. Watch verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Now that's the connection between faith and hope. The reason I hope in God is because my faith is in God. So therefore, I hope in God. If you don't have faith in God, your hope ain't going to be in God. Your hope going to be in other things. That's why people do other things. That's why people play the lottery talking about uh, my horse coming in. Well, my already came in in Revelation. You can read it. He came riding on the white horse. He already came. And, Dr. Matthews, since my hope is in God, I don't have to spend the sure stuff that I have and hope that I hit. That ain't no way to live playing the numbers every and we still got in the city you know Portia we got number houses we still have them they're in Battle Creek they're in Kamazoo number houses now I know you don't go you know your cousins do but you don't I know you don't go <laughs> I'm, mess, I'm messing with you sweetheart she done told on them yeah they do Pat. no I'm messing with you I'm just messing with you but think about that seriously you got five dollars to your last name and instead of buying bread and beef or something that you can make for the week, you're going to go give this to somebody and hope you hit when you got a sure hit in your hand. Get you some, what is it, hamburger helper and some meat or goulash or spaghetti. See, that used to go three, four, five days. Just make a big pot or something. But then you say, well, man, I got this little old money. This ain't going to do much. And then you go play it. Well, if you look at the times, because y'all do know the people, and this is statistics, the people who make under $50,000 a year, they gamble the most. You don't see LeBron. You don't see Oprah. You don't see Denzel. They ain't in lottery lines. But it's the people with no money. The mentality is... is Odessa is something else. And then if they hit Bonner, they'll buy a $6,000 Louis Vuitton purse and they got $2 to put in it. So, <laughs> so she's like, what? What is? They was trying to mess with my little boy, my man Q. Q had on Vans and they thought he was the weirdest cat in school. Everybody joy, oh, Vans, ugh. But Quentin in the house. And some of them sleeping out of a trunk. But they satisfied because they got Jordans on when they step out the trunk. That don't make... <laughs> First of all, what's wrong with Vans? I used to wear them coming up. Man, them shoes, ain't man, them only cost $70. What? But you got to be up there in the 200. I got to have that. Okay. 
When I came up, it was Triple Fat Goose, the Colts. Devon, you remember. You had one. Looked like you would have one. People were shooting people for them. And I'm like, I don't want the coat now. I figure out a hole in it. <laughs> Triple Fat Goose, you remember? That was a, people had to have it. British Knights. And people got to have Now, if you got Jordan money, it's okay to have Jordan shoes. You do what you want. But don't do all that and then come ask the church to pay your rent. That's what I mean. <laughs> you know, as the principal at the school, Williams down there told the boy, he said, take one of them shoes back. Take one of them back. Just hop. The boy told him he was hungry. I'm serious at the school. He told me he had no money. He said, take one of them shoes back. <laughs> the connection. I have hope in God. Because my faith is in God. And they're intertwined. Okay? Psalm uh, 130 and then 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. Okay. Keep that there for me, Deba. Now, when I said I wait for the Lord, my soul wait. And mom and daddy would tell her, wait don't mean you sit in your rusty butt in that chair and don't do nothing. Because we say I'm waiting. Well, you need to do something in the wait that's going to contribute to what you're waiting for. You know, man, unemployment, you know, I'm just waiting, man. What you waiting for? Oh, I'm just waiting for the right job to come up. The next one is the right one. That's the right one. Well, man, I ain't, man, I ain't finna slang like that, man. I, man, that's Burger King money. Burger King money will buy you a house and a car and start you, help you on your retirement. You don't want McDonald's money. You want Exxon Mobil money with a Dollar General brain. If they gave you a hundred million dollars, you would be broke Friday if it was Monday. Because everybody knows what you're going to do. You're going to go buy a Cadillac, Mickey Mouse earrings, 50 chains, all the weed, all, and then you're going to be broke. The only thing you're going to have is a fur coat. <laughs> I'm serious. He said, I waited for the Lord. That don't mean I stand there and don't do nothing. Petra, I'm obeying. I'm meditating. I'm doing what God has. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord to get a job. But while I'm waiting on him, these feet is putting in applications. They ain't going to come knock on the door and say, hi, here's a job. <laughs> I'm, you know, man, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting till my ship come in. Well, call me when it come in, because you ain't finna live with me. You know, they, they, they won't hire me because they say I'm overqualified. Underqualify yourself. <laughs> I don't want that job. How many other ones lined up? No, well, take that one till you get that one. You ain't gonna be grown. I'm getting up, Sheena, every day, going to work, doing all. I come home, you laying on my couch. Watching my TV, which is heat and electricity. I can do this by myself, Mary. I am doing it by myself. I don't need you. We got to tell our young ladies, you need assets, not liabilities. Nobody should bring you down. You can do bad by yourself. I can struggle and be broke on my own. I ain't want to be struggling looking at you. What you bring to the table other than ulcers and venereal diseases? Like what you bring to the table? So you got to wait on the Lord. Your soul wait. And in his word do I hope. Which means you got to know it. Because <laughs> you can't hope in nothing you don't know. That just makes sense, right? Psalm 119, 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. God is my hiding place. He's my shield. That's where you can go to get away from the world. And every now and then, I don't care how much you love, whoever you with, your family, your kids, all that. Every now and then, everybody want to go for at least five minutes day to a hiding place and get away from the world. And then God is the shield, which means he protects you. It don't mean you don't love him. It just means that I just need a little peace and quiet right now. That's all. Give me 15, 20, an hour, whatever it is. You know, go do something. 
because you just need that because everything is just bombarding and bombarding and then he said I hope in thy word which again I got to know what's in it else I can't hope in it because it's amazing the people that won't come when it's sunny for the word when the hell breaks loose they come and think all of a sudden okay give me that word but this, this ain't gonna work It's not, so I'm just going to tell you what a verse says and that's going to change your whole situation. That's not going to work. You got to walk with God. You got to obey God. This got to be a lifestyle. This ain't no momentary thing. You should have treated it right when you had it. Now she's talking about, I ain't, now you panicking because you ain't got nowhere to go. Man, I really love her. You should have showed her that the last 10 years. And this wouldn't even be I mean, Doc might be on the step too. Some of them spend a night on the step. I get here, like, what you doing? Man, my girl left me. Thank God. I'm saying to myself, I don't say to them. Praise God. She woke up. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should have been the left your rusty butt. Uh, Romans 4, 17 to 22. Watch this. As it is written, I have made thee a father of my nations before him many whom nations. he you of read many like, nations. You read like Mike, Mike rubbing off on you. <laughs> I must switch, sweetheart. Go ahead. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead. Remember that word quickeneth means made alive. And calleth those things which he be not as though they were. Right? Calling those, keep that bonner, calling those things, right? Calling those things which are not as though they were. You can, I've told you before, you can speak some things into existence. But what we do is speak the wrong things and the wrong things come into existence. We can speak some things. Calling things that are not as though they are. Stop saying you're poor. I told you that before. Stop saying, again, stop saying you're ugly. Stop saying you're fat. Stop saying you're too black. Stop saying you're overweight. Where are you even getting that from? Because it ain't coming from here. It's coming from outside. Because when you say that you're ugly, you obviously have somebody in mind that's beautiful. Or at least pretty. Or why would you say you're ugly? You're comparing yourself to somebody. And we have to really work hard at it as black people because all we come up with is seeing white woman on the front of every magazine. Mademoiselle and all that stuff. And thank God for the jet and the ebony. And then they start putting us on there. And then when they put us on there, the men, we went straight to the centerfold. We were there, but I don't need, have you read a jet yet? We just go straight to, there she go. <laughs> but the reason you think you're not, whatever that not is, is because you think somebody else is. Am I right? Yeah, you think somebody else is. You think this is the Mademoiselle. They just, not long ago, they just start putting, I don't know if Tyra Banks was the first blacker. I mean, we've had Iman and, of course, all them Dorothy Danger, Lena Horne, all them beautiful people. They was in a, they was in an area, but they wasn't putting them on magazine. You know, they wasn't, we knew they were pretty and beautiful but they wasn't putting them out all they just had were white women on the magazines that weigh 90 pounds and like our babies come out weighing more than that I mean they be this big that's why they falling on the runway they, it ain't the heels they ain't eight because they trying to be thin and falling and, you know I mean y'all need I mean we just thicker right Andrew, yeah, the magazine, T-H-I-C-C-K-K, -K, thick. That's what black folk are. So you got to call things as, as though they are. Oh, I see myself in home. I see myself on. I see myself there. I see myself that. Instead of, oh, I ain't going to never have nothing. Stop, because you're speaking it into existence. You're giving power to that stuff. I'm going to always be by myself. With that attitude, yeah, you're right. I ain't going to never get a good man. Stop going to the creep show. At some point, y'all, stop talking about you don't like clowns, but you keep going to the circus. Stop. Clowns scare me. Stop going to where the clowns are. Do that make sense, Henry? I mean, it's simple to me. You don't like this type of man. Where do you go to find them? To this type of place. <laughs> They may as well name a club Desperate because that's what, Desperate, that's why you in there. 
No, 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 no. You don't need no kid. If you're going to get somebody, get a man. You don't need a boy either. If you go with somebody, go with, get, get, go with a man or something. Okay, let's keep going. I mean, for the woman. I ain't talking about just anybody. The woman go with the man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Watch this. Who against hope believed in hope? Who against hope believed in hope? What? That he might become the father of many nations. Why did against hope believed in hope? Jeanette, Abraham was a hundred when I was a hundred. Sarah was 90. What no hope? In, in the ordinary sense, they're like, this thing done passed. We ain't finna have no. This. Remember now, they're in biblical. This 4,000 years ago. Wasn't no Vialis or Vitagra or whatever it is. <laughs> Something. <laughs> now nah, they can. They, wasn't no pills back then. He's he's a hundred, she ninety, and poor y'all gonna have a kid, man. Please, first of all, you let somebody a hundred and somebody nine. Now both y'all gonna be in the hospital, <laughs> in traction. <laughs> Against hope, Mary, he believed in hope that he might be the father of many nations. When all common sense said, "Man, you must be crazy." According to what, Dr. Matthews? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Watch this. And be not weak in faith. See, that's the key. He wasn't weak in faith. Some of you may not be weak in your body, but you're weak in faith. Your faith weak. You can, and it'll blow you over. Somebody call you ugly, you believe it. That's your weak in faith. Oh, they call me ugly. Okay, so what? They call me the, oh, no, my goodness. No, your faith can't be weak. He considered what, Dr. Matthews? He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Told you, Sister Jeanette, he a hundred and she not. Man. He said, uh-uh. He said, God said it. My hope is in him. It sounds crazy. He said, but I'm hoping in God. Because he know he can't do nothing at a hundred. Go ahead, Dr. Matthew. He staggered not at the promise of he God. He staggered not, Delbert, at the promise. He didn't stagger. You know how drunk people stagger? He, I ain't going to mess with you no more, Bonner. Not today. <laughs> he staggered not. Staggering is when you, 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 ain't, you, you ain't got your footing. And when your faith is weak, you stagger. Anything blow you away. But he was what? To unbelief, but was strong in faith. Stop right there. He was a Andrew at a hundred. He wasn't strong in his body. He was strong in faith. Giving what? Giving glory to God. Watch this. And being fully persuaded. Fully persuaded that what? That what he had promised. God. He was able to what? He was able also to perform. If God said it, he gonna do it. But that's if you got strong faith. And if, you, if your faith is in him, now you got confident expectation, not just hope. And being what? And, and, and therefore, therefore it, was it was imputed. Imputed. That's an accounting term. It was granted to his account for what? To him for righteousness. Last one. Romans 4, um, 24 to 25. Watch this. This is the connection between faith and hope. Watch this. For we are saved by hope. We're saved by what? Hope. Hope. Watch this. But hope that is seen is not hope. If you can see it, well, I'm going to let the verse speak. I'm getting ahead of my, I'm getting excited, Dr. Matthew. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? Why do you hope for what you see? If I woke up and the, the, and the forecast people, Sister Williams, Jeanette, they get me. It'd be like, they say, well, today... There's a seventy-five percent chance of rain. I look out the window. I said, "Well, they don't. It's raining. <laughs> Ain't no seventy-five. You know what I mean? It's raining. It, it's raining. It need to change from seventy-five to a hundred. But if you see something, why do you hope for it? You don't hope for that. You see. You don't. You don't hope for that. You see." When I walked in there, when y'all were so gracious to us on, on pastor's anniversary, as y'all all all the time, when I walked in there and saw them three things, I didn't hope that devil eggs was going to be it. I saw them. 
and I at least knew I ain't even hope for the person made it ain't dirty I knew one that made them so I ain't hope that they clean because I know they clean all of them were clean I'm just saying you, you know what I mean yeah so I didn't go in there and hope that the eggs was in there I don't do that because I saw them when I give Portia the stage plan she don't hope I give them to her because she see them and know she getting them she don't hope for stage play. If I got one, she knows she getting it. I ain't even, she gonna take it for me. <laughs> so we don't hope for that which we see, 25. But if we hope for that we see not. Then we do what? Then do we with patience Now wait with patience. Because one or two of you may wait, but you ain't, we ain't patient. Because Abraham... Even though he believed God, and this can show you can happen to anybody, he said, well, God taking too long. He said, Hagar, hey, come here. And then Sarah told him, well, go on. I'm too old. And then when she had it, Sarah started tripping. Like, you the one told me to go in there. And, and most men I know, I all, most, if their wife tell them to go sleep, with, okay, baby, you're right. They go, <laughs> she don't know nothing until she say that. Yeah, so God must be talking to you. <laughs> that is the craziest thing, Andrew. I don't know what Abraham was doing. Oh, yes, I do. He was being the, yeah, I know what he was doing. Yeah, he ain't gonna wait on God. He, well, Sarah said it. Sarah said 10 other things. You ain't paying no attention to him. <laughs> now she said, go sleep with Hagar, who was younger than Sarah. And Abraham was like, cool, straight up. <laughs> Have mercy. A greater hope. Hope thou in God. The psalmist started off talking about I'm depressed, I'm this, I'm that, but I hope in God. He went on to say some other stuff. I'm this, I'm that. He gets back and said I'm a hope in God. What I'm telling you today, if you're going to take one thing from that, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you got. I don't care how long you got it. I don't care who in your house, who you trying to get out the house, who you trying to get in the house. You looking at your check, it's going down, food going up. Hope thou in God. God. The health reports say this, this say that, my body. Hope thou in God. Stuff happening all around. Hope thou in God. Father God, we thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you for your grace and your glory. Thank you for letting us share in your redemption story. Thank you for the hope in which you place in us, that confident expectation. It's not hope as in I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. It's confident hope like Abraham had, spoke things that he didn't see, things that he wanted to see. May we have that same confident assurance, not based upon us. The Bible didn't say Abraham was strong in his body. It said he was strong in faith. May our faith increase through life connections, through Bible study, through the worship service, through the personal devotional time we spend with you father so we don't stagger at the promises with unbelief but we walk upright straight and confident knowing that if our God said it he's big enough to do it God we thank you for the hope that you place in us that comes through the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless us as we move in faith as we walk in faith with confident expectation knowing you will do everything you said you would do bless us now father keep us in your name in your grace and in your glory in jesus name we pray amen amen praise god hallelujah a sunday sermon is coming from genesis 22 genesis 22 this is the first book in the bible verses 1 through 14 and we're going to be talking about the providential 